In the following tutorial, we are going to cover static mesh workflow. This is an overview of how to use static meshes, how to detail your environment using static meshes inside UDK, uh, in specific to static meshes that come with UDK. Uh, this video has been sped up, uh, so you get to see an overall uh, idea of how the environment comes together. Now, you're fairly limited of what static meshes you get to use to create your environment, uh, if you use static meshes that come bundled with UDK. Uh, the ideal situation, the ideal way is to create your own. A lot of times you may not have access to a 3D package or have 3D modeling knowledge. So there are some static meshes that you can use with UDK to create some uh, original environments and levels uh, that uh, haven't been done before. So what I usually do is I go to the content browser and look through and browse some uh, through some of the available static meshes that I may want to use. And then I begin to drop them into the scene and based on the BSP geometry I begin to work with uh, resizing some brushes and resizing static meshes to fit them into the template uh, for the BSP geometry. Now you could create an entire level using nothing but static meshes uh, but uh, in this case uh, you know, having uh, BSP brushes for the base and then detailing with static meshes. Uh, this works well for this particular environment. I uh, also, again, if you had to create your own custom static meshes, uh, that would be the ideal way because then you could control uh, and create each individual single wall and have all the pieces being able to use together uh, because that's what you were planning for. Uh, but in this situation, uh, using a combination of BSP geometry and static meshes, and resizing them works really well. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm using window static mesh and the glass static mesh and combining them together. Uh, reusing them quite a lot, uh, duplicating, moving, using the repetitive element of the windows to kind of uh, you know get a lot of mileage from those on the static meshes. You should not be afraid to duplicate and to resize your static meshes uh, because if you use one static mesh and if you duplicate it uh, numerous amounts of times inside UDK that becomes an instance of the static mesh. If you simply reuse the same static mesh it gives you a really low overhead and it doesn't impact performance. So there is a lot of resizing, a lot of moving around, a lot of um, kind of gauging of uh, how I want to use these static meshes and uh, how the environment uh, is going to come together. So I may have to resize some brushes. Uh, so now I'm trying to get an overall feel and the direction that I want this environment to go in. And you can see that uh, I'm deleting some old brushes and uh, repositioning new static meshes to detail the upper part to kind of get a better sense of the environment. You will also notice that static meshes that I'm using are standalone. Uh, I tend to resize them as from the, the gizmo from the pivot point. Now here's the, the important part is if you're using static meshes and if you're resizing it from the pivot point, uh, you have to be very careful uh, because if you're going to use the static meshes in a modular fashion, uh, meaning that you want them to uh, snap together and form another object, meaning that, that if you want your static meshes to be on the grid, you should not resize from the pivot point. Uh, the important part of static meshes is if you are going to use them in a modular fashion, you want to control the value of how much you resize them. Uh, don't resize or scale up or down your static meshes from the pivot point unless they're going to be just standalone uh, static meshes and not used in the modular fashion where they uh, snap on the grid to each other. Here I'm replacing some of the BSP brushes uh, such as these stairs and detailing them with a static mesh. So don't be afraid to delete uh, your BSP brushes. Uh, so you need to detail your environment and replace those BSP brushes uh, with something more detailed aesthetic meshes. And make sure that throughout the process that you are jumping inside the game and running around inside the environment. So here we are after about 15-20 minutes of work we have a very simple environment blocked in with some detailed static meshes around the environment to kind of bring it to life. Uh, the key is to use static meshes in creative ways, to reuse them as much as possible. As you can see that I use the same beam here and I just simply duplicated and kind of created some detail to the architecture of the environment. Uh, going inside we have a few beams as well, we have a lot of duplication going on here 
uh, for beam supports, uh, a pipe. We have one here, uh, same pipe is used here and here. All I've done is just I resized it and I rescaled it down, rescaled it up. Uh, here's another couple of pipes uh, used in a modular fashion, uh, snapped together, and then I moved it over here. So the key is if you are using the static meshes that come with UDK to use them in a very creative way and not be afraid to duplicate and resize them and just combine them together to form something new. Since you are limited to the type of environments you can create, you really have to go uh, a step beyond and combine static meshes in a very interesting new way. Unless you can create your own static meshes, but at this stage there are enough of static meshes that you can use to create something interesting. So let's jump inside the game and let's take a look at how everything looks from the point of view of the player. So here we are, I'm gonna walk around the building, take a look at how everything looks. Let's go inside and just kinda run around and see what it looks like. And overall, it's coming together. Next step is to begin applying some textures to our walls and then begin to add lighting and a skybox.